Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Healing Myself, the podcast. I'm Scott Hayes, a licensed clinical social worker. And I'm Shate Hayes, producer and certified business and mindset coach. You've just tuned in to Our Revolution. We're on a mission to help our community find freedom from the inside out. So we host conversations about God, therapy, and all the lessons we've learned about how to love, trust, forgive, and affirm ourselves first. We used to talk about the hard parts of life. Now, we talk about the healed parts, because that's where true freedom resides. Join us, and you'll see that when you save yourself first, you transform your life, and you lead the way for those around you to save themselves, too. Yo, what up, though? Welcome back, y'all. Um... We've had some really great guests on the podcast lately. Mm -hmm. Um, If you haven't already, go back and check out episodes 80, 81, 82. We talked about everything from uh, God and therapy, Mm -hmm. how to heal our bodies from the inside out, Mm -hmm. and even 101 self-care activities to take better care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, as much as I love having guests on the show, I'm always really happy when it's just us, mm-hmm. uh, our banter, our conversation, all the things that make us us. I'm really, really proud of those things. So it's good to be back with uh, just us. Mm-hmm. And today we want to have like a, a conversation, one that's a really interesting conversation about observing and not absorbing mm-hmm. uh, other people's feelings and the things that they go through. And it's, uh, this promises to be a great one. Let's get right into this thing. Yeah. So where this came from, it's actually really a conversation to close out Mental Health Awareness Month. You know, Mm -hmm. last year we were able to have a panel where we talked about the tea on therapy and that was our way of sort of observing the the month. This year, I would venture to say like we had a whole ass live podcast. (laughs) It's like, well, no, that was in March. But we've had some really great conversations about mental health uh, otherwise. But so I guess our our episode with Dr. Cicely in the 101 activities for Mm self-care is definitely a full on mental health awareness month type conversation. So to close this out. Observing, not absorbing, absorbing. And to be honest, this topic has been on our list of topics for at least a year or two. Yeah, we kind of like. Well, as we come across saying quotes, you know, from movies or situations uh, from TV shows or things that we see on Mm -hmm. social media, we just kind of keep a list of things like, oh, this would be cool to unpack it. This would be cool. And especially if something's coming up for us in our own personal life. So it's interesting that this topic has been on our list for a while. Mm -hmm. And then it just came up in our family therapy session yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so we had no idea that this would be the topic, but it seems very timely. It's a really good way, I think, for us to process out loud, you know, how it even came up. But essentially, I'll just tell you how it came up. Essentially, we're (laughs) talking about, you know, just how life has been lifing lately and, you know, uh, how grief comes up around certain situations and how we were talking through like, well, dang, I don't, sometimes I don't want to really express my sadness because then I don't want to make it, I don't want it to make you sad. And then you'd be mm-hmm. like, well, I don't, I won't, I don't share everything that I'm feeling because I don't want you to be worried about me and I don't want you to feel mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. And the therapist is like, well, y'all should actually really talk about how to observe someone's feelings and not absorb them so that you mm-hmm. can, when one of you is feeling upset, the other one can stay even, like stay on even ground, stay settled, pull them up right? Just observe, make sure that you're being empathetic and supportive, but you don't have to take on what they're feeling. So that's where we're starting from today. Like this idea of how to sort of be a witness to what someone's experiencing and going yeah. through without really just like jumping into it uh, ourselves. You mentioned once before Kev on stage was like, it used to be for him and his his household, like if his wife was mad, everybody we mad. Everybody we, we mad. We mad. But actually, what the therapist was saying is that's not the healthiest thing no. to do. So, um, I guess just professionally speaking, since we haven't done this in a while either, and it is Mental Health Awareness Month, yeah. what does it actually mean, Mister Mental Health Professional, to observe and not absorb? I always, I always have to giggle when you say that when you call me Mister Mental Health Professional. Um, there's, there's not a, a, a super deep meaning to it. It is really just the, the art and the task, um, before us of being able to see things 
without taking them in and, and allowing them to belong to us, to be able to, to look at and um, just see how someone is feeling, to notice a behavior and not allow that behavior to become your own mm -hmm. or allow it to impact the way that you feel about you. Mm -hmm. uh, when we say things like don't let people steal your joy, mm -hmm. don't let people have your your happiness, that type of thing. It is knowing that there are folks who can walk into a room and change the temperature of that room, right? And people can come in and the vibe be really good and they can they can come in and have had a bad day and you feel that energy, mm -hmm. you know? So what the, the concept of, of observing and not absorbing is really around not letting anybody else be the thermostat. Mm -hmm. um, for, for your emotion, mm -hmm. uh, for the way that you feel about you or for the way that you deal with them, being able to understand what they are going through and, uh, not letting it impact, you know, how you move forward with, with your own day or with your own, uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. I think it's difficult to be in relationship with people who love deeply to love at all really without being impacted by how people show up in your life and to not want to do something about it. Mm. Uh, I think we all want to, um, we, we view friendship relationship and that kind of thing. Sometimes we, we almost take it on as an intervention. If somebody is feeling bad that we want to make them feel better. Right. And sometimes the only way we know how to show empathy. And I think this is really important that empathy doesn't mean that I take on whatever it is that you're feeling mm -hmm. and make it my own. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we take that on as our personal mission to, and we see empathy as being able to take on your sadness, say that I feel it the way that you feel it. And let's do something about it together without, and, and we don't often know how to do that without allowing it to change our mood without absorbing that thing, mm -hmm. being able to really, uh, look at how someone is feeling call a thing a thing and not taking it on as your own mm -hmm. and helping them navigate through it mm -hmm. it is not our job you know essentially to help people navigate through whatever it is they're feeling yeah. and we have to find a path to empathy that is supportive that doesn't mean that i jump in that space with you yeah i don't know that it it's intentional and I'm speaking for mm -hmm. myself specifically. So I have been learning a couple of folks over the course of the past few months have mentioned this concept or this field this practice, I guess, called human design, which mm -hmm. I had not heard about before this year, but apparently it's this type of practice where they like use your birth charts to sort of see your inner, like see your energy, something and like help you mm -hmm. use your energy better. It's, it's kind of like, a birth chart reading, but, um, you know, whereas I think those, those other types of things are for like your personality and that mm -hmm. this is specifically about your energy and how to use your energy the best or most effectively for you anyways. So I did one of these sessions and my emotional cha channels, or I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly, are, she said, they're completely clear. There's like nothing mm -hmm. blocking them. And she, and the person who did it was like, that means you're a true empath. So literally, mm. whatever energetic energies are around you, you feel, which is something I've known about myself. So think about, mm -hmm. um, I joke about this often, but when I was 11 and I saw the Titanic for the first time, for mm -hmm. example, and boohooed, <laughs> sobbed <laughs> at the end and uh, was depressed for like three days afterwards. And even to like to this day, there are some things that I just cannot watch because okay. I'm too emotional. I will get too emotionally involved mm -hmm. in it mm -hmm. or some situations that I just really don't want to hear about. I'm a little bit better now that I'm older because I'm going to mm -hmm. be too emotionally involved in it. So if I see someone crying, for example, I'm probably going to be moved to tears mm -hmm. or like if the story is just moving, I'm I can cry at a dog commercial, you know, like sure. just <laughs> it's just. So my point is, I'm not seeking out something to take on. I just mm -hmm. happen to be moved by the energies or the frequencies or whatever. I don't even know how you say it correctly around me. And so mm -hmm. to even have this charge from the therapist to be like, how can you observe and not absorb feels like it's going to take like real intention 
mm-hmm. for me, for someone like me who is naturally just moved by yeah. what people are feeling. Yeah, I I agree with that. And I think that a part of a part of the reason that I'm glad that we're doing this to close out Mental Health Awareness Month, right, is is just that um I view this work that we have to do uh ongoing with our mental health as something that's that's done in practice, right? Something that is continuous work, something that we all, I think, struggle with. Um, we talk frequently about like therapy gives you self-awareness, right? Mm-hmm. And self-awareness is really like understanding why you do the things that you do. And then the healing portion of it, which is the work that we have to do, <clears throat> is work that is ongoing. And it is also not something that has ever done with perfection. Mm-hmm. It is something that is done with practice. And then you, 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 you go out, you live life, you come and you talk about it in therapy, you gain self-awareness and you see how can I move better the next time, mm-hmm. right? It's not something that, and, and it's something that it should be normalized for all of us because we are all trying to figure out how to um, love better, you know, and how to ultimately live better and how to, how to be better as we're becoming, you know, the our best and favorite versions of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think that that will vacillate, you know, that will, um, you'll, you'll make a little progress and then you'll experience something in life that maybe you weren't prepared for. And then maybe you'll take a step or two back. But for me, it is rather than viewing it as going backwards in life, it is like being able to step back and take a look at how I navigated that situation and how I can do it a little bit better the next time. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say the, the, the thing that I love most about what we do is, and, and I mean, us investing in ourselves by being in, in individual and, and marriage therapy mm-hmm. is that we give ourselves permission to like live life and then like reconcile the books on that to see how we can be better and how we can love better and be better for each other. And I think there is no way that you get around each other's humanity. So things that I thought that we had figured out and we're doing very, very well in the beginning of our marriage, I think that life has happened to us in a way that has made us withdraw a little bit and be a little bit more careful careful and not as free. Mm -hmm. So the conversation that we were having yesterday in therapy about like, well, I don't tell you everything because like I noticed that you're in this period of like hardness around starting business, Mm -hmm. things that are difficult for you. Uh, Our own grief around like having our uh, fertility issues come back up. And when you love deeply in that way, you're, you want to be careful with your person's heart. I know that you want to be careful with my heart. I want to be careful with yours. So there is like things that have worked for me in the past have been like, I don't want to raise no hell here because I don't want to make things harder than they, than they already are. So some things I'll keep to myself, but it's almost like things that I know haven't worked for me in the past, but I've withdrawn to the safety mm-hmm. of that in order to not, in order to, I guess, in my mind, be a better husband. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And at one point, I think we didn't have these challenges. Mm -hmm. And so we were freer to talk about whatever was going on. We were kind of moving around. And I think that's really it. We're learning in real time that life happens to you in that way. Mm -hmm. There are times when, and and I think some, the way that I've been able to think about it is like, I think we've been having a lot of a lot of conversations recently, like, oh shit, I, I guess the honeymoon is over. <laughs> Cause we be fussing and mm-hmm. you know, going through whatever we're going through. And it's never that we don't like each other, but it's like real life is not as free. You know, it's not as there there are things that I'm trying to protect over here, and it's not that it's against you, but I'm, I'm holding more things rather than openly talking about them. And what it is is that I'm trying to think for both of us rather than giving you an opportunity to just to tell me what it is and us be able to navigate that together. I've gone back into that spot to where I try to think ahead and plan ahead and maybe she's not going to be able to receive this. And then there's this fear of rejection, or maybe there's not enough room for my stuff as well. And I'm trying to um, you know, plan for both of us and be a, be a good husband and not talk about some of the things. And it's just, 
having to relearn stuff that I've already learned <clears throat> about how we should be openly having conversation and giving each other a chance, you know, to, to, you know, just say the thing. And that's difficult work for, for any human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, also things that we're having to learn and relearn as a couple. Do you feel like you're relearning how to observe and not absorb? I'm learning that um, I have to trust, you know, um, that this space is a safe space and that there is room for both of our stuff here and that we both are experiencing life as life comes at us and um that you know some of the stuff that you that you go through is it's not if, if there could be a, a subtitle for this i would call it that ain't my shit mm. and some of the things that you are navigating through as much as i want to support you as your husband some of it ain't mine mm -hmm. and my job is not to take it on and try to carry it for you mm -hmm. that doesn't make me a good husband mm -hmm. to try to take it on and carry it for you mm -hmm. and then say my stuff is not important. Let's not talk about that because we're going through this thing right now. Mm -hmm. Because that is me rather than observing and being a good supportive husband, it is absorbing and trying to solve the problems for you. Mm -hmm. So you have a right as an individual and as my wife to solve your own issues. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need a superhero. I mm -hmm. think one of the greatest things about our marriage has been that there is partnership here. Mm -hmm. There's not, you, you didn't come to me we didn't choose each other because you needed to be saved. Mm -hmm. You never asked for me to put my cape on and try to do this thing for you. There's nothing that I can do to figure out like what you want to do with career steward mm -hmm. for you. There's, I can be a sounding board for you, but I can't take that on. I can't be like, Hey, don't, don't contribute anything in the house. I'm going to take it all on and we're going to be fine. And da, 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 da. that's, that's old stuff that I used to do. That was never beneficial for my relationships in the past, but, when there is uncertainty, I can resort back to things that um, worked in the past, maybe didn't work well, but worked in the past and having to navigate a space of actively being in the midst of that and giving you um, the permission to solve the problem on your own and supporting in a way by asking you, what do you need in this moment for support mm -hmm. rather than trying to take it on and do it for you? Mm -hmm. What do you feel like, um, you know, you've talked a good bit about emotion regulation or emotional mm -hmm. regulation, especially when it comes to men. Like, what part does that play in observing and not absorbing? Or does it? Uh, I think it's all inter interconnected. Um, I think there's a certain amount of, like, control that I want from my perspective that almost i label it as regulating my emotions but what i'm really doing is avoiding them mm -hmm. and it is again saying that my what i'm going through in this moment what i'm feeling what what is happening in this moment is not as important because my person is going through something that's very important and she needs help right and that help sometimes looks like pulling my stuff in or not allowing it to be on the table or not raising, not raising hell about this thing that happened rather than uh, having the, the conversation, rather than having difficult conversations, clarifying conversations around what's going on with, in this moment, in this household that we need to problem solve around. And uh, that is actually emotion dysregulation when you start to uh, decide that whatever it is that, that you're feeling and you're going through and you need is not important to talk about mm -hmm. and you just got to do something different mm -hmm. um i'll ask you how have you seen this kind of show up in your life mm, i feel like what i was saying before is really i don't have anything ad additional in terms of like mm -hmm. the empath empathetic parts of me like i really feel people's situations i feel you know feel for people like often, mm -hmm. especially when they're going through something, I can just see like people on the street and kind of read their conversations or body language. And if it seems like sadness, I'll be like, Oh, I hope they're okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just feel everything. So for me, it's just going to be intentional work to, to observe.
observe that and not actually like take it in or, and feel it. And it can be, it's definitely something to, that I'm still processing through because I do think it's a gift, especially in the work, the type of work that I do um, in terms of helping people transition through, you know, mm -hmm. a career change or starting a new business or um, building a team for like transitioning and like being able to really hear where folks are, hear their fears, hear their mm -hmm. not enoughness, hear their background stories and what are the things that are keeping them kind of stuck and shying away and like being able to pull out you know, the things that are going to excite them as they move forward, it requires a certain amount of, yeah, I guess it's, it's for me, it's like, I'm going to have to really process like how to be empathetic, how to have mm -hmm. empathy. Mm -hmm. What's the boundary there? How much can I feel? What do I mm -hmm. do with? Yeah, that's, I don't, I don't have the words for it actually, but I do agree that there is a boundary that's needed and I'm going to have to figure out wh where where to pull it from for me, it. for me i think the way that i that i contextualize it is like i've always celebrated myself for it like i, I feel like i have this gift of being able to like hear people's heart mm -hmm. right and i was saying i was hearing you say you know i want to be able to hear where you are and hear you know i, I for me it is is the work for me is i want to be able to hear your heart without trying to help you control how it beats mm, mm -hmm, right so mm -hmm. if i can yeah. hear your heart and know um what it is that you're trying to deal with from a sincere place mm -hmm. to be able to have that level of empathy and not jump in and be like well actually your heart should be you know what i'm saying or mm -hmm. this is what you need to do to you you know that part does not give people what they need to be able to navigate life mm -hmm. on their own you know, and, and I think that sometimes that creates uh, what the therapist was fussing at us about a little bit, just like this codependency mm. kind of thing when you don't give people um, the right to navigate their own circumstances. Like we can um, love people to a point to where it does them a disservice when we try to uh, navigate life for them. And I think this shows up when, you know, people ask you for advice on matters of the heart and you, you, you give them advice, but that advice is based on like your perspective, mm. you know, the, your own life experience. And one thing that, that we have to do, especially in my, in my field is like, give, give people permission to like do it on their own, make their own mistakes and still be there for them. Mm. And that's one of the reasons we don't give advice. Like we give people options and say things like, well, have you considered, you know, this thing and how, what do you think would happen if you did da, 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 da. And you know, that, that type of thing, people have the, the inherent right, the, the human right to uh, feel what it is that they that they feel, navigate life on their own, le learn their own lessons and figure out, you know, what adjustments they need to make. And a lot of times we think that we're saving people from stuff by telling them like how we navigated it and giving them advice, but the advice is always skewed by our own life experience. I think, I do think that's a valid point and especially relevant for like the work that you do. It's so mm -hmm. deeply connected to people's mental and emotional growth. But with my job as a consultant, mm -hmm. like it is actually my job to give people the next steps or to mm -hmm. advise them on what to do next. And so I don't think there's any separating that part from my work. But I think even as you were talking, it started to become clear to me that I think I want to have a heart for people, but what um, Westbrook was challenging us on is like, how do I not feel it too? So just mm -hmm. because you're feeling stuck or scared, not you, but like if a client or anyone yeah. is feeling any range of emotions, how can I like honor it, respect it, appreciate it, um, and then not also feel the same mm -hmm. things? Or, you know, I mm -hmm. can see for me, <laughs> for example, feeling someone's stuff and be like, oh yeah, like I, uh, I could... I remember when I felt, you know, yeah. like stuck in my career mm -hmm. and then I, I'm in, in this kind of wallowing moment of whatever they were feeling. That's, I think, where I need to figure out the boundary. And not that it, it doesn't really happen so much in my professional work. So yes. I don't know if that's a great example, but in my mm -hmm. personal life, 
if a family member or friends and somebody's like going through something and they call me for um, just the ear to talk to or, you know, like don't don't let my goodness, my mom or my grandmother or my brother, somebody call me and they're going through something. And if I even hear a sniffle, I'm just I'm no good. I'm no more good. I'm just immediately like, oh, my gosh, I'm in tears, too. What's happening? How can I fix it? I'm sad for the rest of the day because my people are going through something. I think that <laughs> is where I'm going to have to learn to be like, oh, shit. Like, my people are hurting. I hate when they hurt. You know, I, I feel away when they, I'm moved when they yeah. hurt. But how can I, you know, not take not take it on, um, but still be there and support? And same thing here in, in our relationship. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it is not hard for me at all not to absorb when I'm at work. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a master of being able to tell my veterans, like, this decision is yours. Mm-hmm. Like, this your shit. I think a part of, like, the conversation that we're having is, like, not how to navigate it so much professionally because I think, I know for me, I've, I it took me some time, but I've gotten very good at, like, being able to tell my folks, like, I'm not going to work harder than you. Mm-hmm. You know, this part of being able to, to navigate uh observing but not absorbing in close relationship i think is what what i find so difficult that is why i've I've had to have so many boundaries with my family around like my my mama and and my sisters and you know just people in my life calling and being like hey what should i do i can't be impartial in those situations because i have a heart for this person's well-being Mm -hmm. right i'm invested in how well you are because that impacts how we show up for each other as well I don't want to see you fail, mm-hmm. right? I I am have the hardest time with being able to like talk to my nephew who's, you know, I've I've been, you know, there for him since he, you know, was a baby walking around, you know, Tuskegee's dorms with me and trying to help him navigate, you know, adulthood, uh, being a father, you know, heartbreak all of those things without wanting something better for him, without being frustrated with him because I feel like he's not listening and allowing him to still have self-determination and being there for him on the back end, even when he doesn't make the choice that I advised him to make. That shit is hard Mm -hmm. because it's heartbreaking for me to see someone that I love go through a similar heartbreak that I feel like I went to. And I'm like, Hey, Dig. Mm-hmm. I told you don't do that. And you <laughs> did it anyway. He still has the right to self-determination yeah. to be able to say, I'm going to navigate this on my own and me not being frustrated. Because what we do in a relationship is being like, I told your ass and now mm-hmm. you hear back crying to me about mm-hmm. the same thing, right? And and that's when we absorb, right? We absorb and it is, I, I, I want to humanize this for us because even with the skill set that I have with 20 years of experience, I'm still very frustrated with my people when they call me and ask me to do things that I know I shouldn't be doing because I can't be their therapist. Mm-hmm. I give them ways to navigate situations and they go out and they do the opposite or work in their self-determination <laughs> and do what the hell they want to do. And then call me back crying about the decision that I told them not to make. And being able to love people in those situations and being able to still observe what it is and not being an old, I told you so face ass person, which is not what they need. Being able to, you know, honor people uh, allowing themselves to navigate in a way that feels true and real to them Mm -hmm. and then showing up for them still is really like true love, like true, true empathy true um relationship is being okay with whatever decision you make and being and not making their um determination not to follow whatever advice you gave a reflection on the relationship that you have with that person Mm -hmm. whether it's close or whether they honor you or not making it about you so just like i'm able to say that ain't my shit it also ain't about me right you can't have both of those so if it ain't my shit then it also ain't about me. So it can't end up being like, you know, well, you ain't take my advice. So don't call me and ask me about nothing else. Which is what I would want to do. <laughs> exactly. It, but that is our humanity. That is the work, like, right? Why, why, <laughs> don't why, call why, me why, no more about that. 
Yeah. Right? And we have to learn how to. And, and it's just hard because you love and you can with 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 clients that put me in um places like that veterans that I've had that have come back to to the the domiciliary that I worked with three and four and five times I get to a point to where like I don't want him on my case low no matter what don't assign him to me because we've done this work a number of times and he's not ready for whatever reason and at this capacity um, I don't have what it takes to be able to be, be productive with this person. We don't get to handle family like that. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be, we don't get to be like, hey, don't call me no more. You still got to show up and be there for that person. Or we we don't, we might not want to say don't call me anymore, but we could set a boundary and say, hey, like this conversation, we keep talking about the same situation over and mm -hmm. over. You clearly have some, you know, you things you want to do. I think you should talk to a professional about this actual mm -hmm. specific conversation and maybe not not to me. Like, I mm -hmm. think that is actually a reasonable request mm -hmm. to make. We don't have to sit and listen to the same things over and over and over, especially if the person is not willing to do anything differently about it. Yeah. And I think a part of the work is also us like learning to navigate the situation better. So now I can be like, hey, you know. We've talked about this a few times. So do you want a sounding board or do you want some assistance with problem solving here? Because I'm I'm OK with being a sounding board for you. Mm -hmm. But we've had some of these conversations in the past and it doesn't really sound like you want any assistance with solving the problem. Or I want to affirm for you that the problem is not mine to solve. So if you just want somebody to hear you, I'm here for that. But if you want some help solving a problem, then maybe it is time for you to talk to someone else. Yeah. And that's that is actually as empathetic as I am. That is is probably a hard boundary for me. Like I, mm -hmm. there's only so many times I can hear the same situation and you not do anything about it. Like so if you're if yeah, that's just my own stuff. I'm like, <laughs> if we're going to keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. What mm -hmm. is that? What is the different? What is that? Mm. what is it <laughs> thank, it's insanity thank you thank you and so why why are we why are we you know so that's my own stuff anyways but you 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 we you get to recognize when something is like i i say it's above my pay grade what you got going on is above my pay grade right mm -hmm. or for me is i don't have the bandwidth for mm -hmm. that because that's that's not how i work through problems and i don't know that i could be a healthy help for you in this situation. Mm -hmm. It's okay to like turn that on yourself and be like, hey, I don't have the capacity. Maybe you should talk to someone else. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my next question for you is then, you know, what do you hope to see happen um, as we endeavor to observe and, and not absorb? Not yeah. perfection, but yeah. what, what would be ideal? What I really hope happens is that we find our way to being able to one be fully you know this has been i don't think we had a problem with it in the past but because this has been a more sensitive season full of lots of transition from a lot of different ways that we feel comfortable and i'll i'll speak for myself because i can't really put on what you have been doing your motivations feel 1000 percent comfortable sharing exactly how we feel um, that's one thing without any repercussions for those feelings. The second thing is if the other one of us is feeling away, whenever it's the other person's turn to feel away, because she also said we can't both be on a ledge at the same time. So whenever mm -hmm. one of us has gotten off the ledge and the other one has gotten on, that we will find the words in the expression of support that makes either of us feel truly genuinely supported uh, without taking it on. And then maybe, you know, I would, the way that I think I'm going to try to approach it, just an FYI, like, I want to be able to say, you know, I'm sorry you're feeling that way. Is there anything I can do to support? And then also give you the space to feel mm -hmm. it without any expectations that you unfeel it at any particular time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I just maybe hope to see that be third thing like the consistent through line with how we maybe navigate tough emotional experiences mm. what about you sure. mm -hmm. uh, 
I think that my heart's desire is I learn how to get back to myself Mm -hmm. and learn how to um, validate what you may be feeling in that moment and do gentle redirection um, when some shit don't belong to me Mm -hmm. Um, and be able to call out things that are not working um that may be impacting you know their relationship here um so i think that that i can do a a better job of validating what it is and calling out what it is that you may be feeling without invalidating what it is that Mm -hmm. you know what impact this is having over me Mm -hmm. and being able to have a, a conversation around um intent versus impact uh around like i understand you know what you're you're feeling and i feel like it may be um unjustly directed at me Mm. uh, and asking if we can do something different rather than trying to stuff it and not have the conversation because a lot of times what ends up happening is like we feel like all right I know my person feeling the way and they're going through whatever it is. So I'm gonna let that ride. Mm-hmm. And then it happens again. I'm gonna let that ride. And then it happens the third time and you explode on the person. And then yo, the first thing that you say is I've been letting that shit go for it. Mm-hmm. Which is what most people do. Which is what most people do. And we end up just handling things the wrong way rather than calling it out in the moment and understanding that You know, as human beings, we are also very complex and we have the ability to be able to do two or three things at once and know that two things can be true at the same time. Like, yes, you can be grieving and yes, you can also find a way like not to take it out on your partner. Like you can find a way to ask for help without beating up on someone that's important to you. You can find a way to um, be supportive without trying to take over for that person and uh just i think that we will at the end of the day i think the the conversation is that there's none of this exists in perfection we will always be people who are navigating this and trying to balance this really deep love that we have for each other with being able to allow the person that you love most and best to be able to still be their their own self and be becoming you know and as you try to navigate the love that you you have for a person and reconcile it with allowing them to make their own mistakes and find their own way there will be conflict that arises and learning how to navigate conflict is is what is important because there will be times when you're gonna bump heads with and there will be intersections with how you feel about how you show up in the world and how life is coming at you and how you navigate that. And we have to be able to allow our emotions. And the therapist said this, to be able to allow our emotions to move through us. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And by that same token, I got to be able to allow my spouse's emotions and the person that I'm in a relationship with and my family, allow their emotions to move through, through them, mm-hmm. you know, because they, they have to learn how to navigate that. And I know we bring this to an end, but I was just thinking about something like from when I was, when I was a kid, and I'll be riding my bike. If I saw something in the middle of the road, I'll try to run over that shit because I thought maybe it would it was gonna help me jump something, or mm-hmm. I can see how tough my bike was, or you know, I'm trying to turn anything and everything into a ramp of mm-hmm. some sort. And that's who I was as a child mm-hmm. in my immaturity, not knowing that if I ran over something sharp, it may, you know mess up my tires on my bike or something like that Mm -hmm. now i have a car that i'm paying the amount of my car payment on if i see something in the middle of the road i'm going around it Mm -hmm. i'm figuring out a way to navigate around it Mm -hmm. and we can't navigate our emotions by trying to run through them Mm -hmm. right we have to learn how to navigate around the things that are are tough for us without trying to run over them you know we have to learn how to navigate through things that are tough that are that are, you know, we got to learn how to navigate joy and navigate sadness and navigate depression and navigate all those things without trying to um, run through something that that may mess up some stuff for us, without trying to 
you know, uh, do it in a way that, that ends up causing some internal damage that we can't fix. But not avoid them. Just, not avoid the them. Navigate. what she was saying. She was saying, right. feel it. Like, actually yeah. let it go through you. Yeah. Maybe don't let it sit there. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. So speaking of being towards the end of the conversation, what is your music for this moment? What does this feel like to you? Mm, there's a song um, by Braxton Cook called Wish You Well. That's nice. Um, it really seems like more of a, almost a, a breakup song. Mm -hmm. but he's really saying like you know whatever comes next for you I, I wish you well like I've I've been in this thing with you and no matter what it is I can't help you you know uh get through those feelings but I wish you well mm -hmm. like I'm here I've been here and even though I can't do the work for you I wish you well mm -hmm. so learning how to you know observe what going through and wish them well and not try to do it for them mm. and i am running back tony jones energy budget you love some tony jones she's, she's dope but there are moments where she's like i'm a you know let life be your life be your teacher mm -hmm. or you know just i am on a reciprocity in terms of energy even though it feels a little bit more like these are hard boundaries I'm caring for my own. I don't have the, I don't have the energy budget to take on your stuff. Yeah. Even though that's the tone of the song, I do resonate with the like. I still want to have a heart for people, but yeah. also I, I actually probably don't have the space, the capacity mm -hmm. to take on your stuff on top of mm -hmm. mine as well. So okay. it's just there are so many moments in that song. Um, where she is just affirming, like, I gotta, I gotta let you, I gotta let you keep your stuff mm -hmm. so that I can tend to mine more effectively. Mm -hmm. And it does kind of sometimes feel cringy based on how we were sort of brought up to like, really, I mean, even, even think about things that your mom says be, be like, oh, but that's family. If you're mm -hmm. trying to set a boundary, she's like, oh, but that's family as if we shouldn't have any, if a family member is going mm -hmm. through something. So we're kind of socialized to think actually counter to what energy budget is mm -hmm. singing okay. about mm -hmm. but still i think it's 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 the right it's the right vibe for sure it is yeah i love tony jones too i put it on you but my lady said i'm gonna let life be your teacher like that's what i'm talking about uh -huh. you better say it in a way that I ain't cussing folk out <laughs> let life teach you since right. you won't listen to me right right and you know what it does. It will. <laughs> it will every like, time. Every single time life will teach you. Well, if you have made it to this part of the conversation, you must like what you hear. We thank you also for, for staying with us. Um, and we invite you to continue supporting us even beyond this conversation. And let me tell you how you can do that. One of three ways. One, you can like, follow, rate, subscribe, share this conversation with a friend or family member who wants a safe space to start their healing journey. That's the first way. You, The second way you can uh, support is to attend one of our events. So we just had one man to man last mm -hmm. weekend. The next one is on June the 23rd each month. Um, show up pop of it, something that we have going on uh, live and a portion of those proceeds goes to our therapy fund for black adults. Third yeah. way, you can rep your healing through our affirmative merch, our bars, hashtag bars. Um, and you can just find that on our website. Uh, what is it? Healing myself that co forward slash bars, B-A-R-Z, I think mm -hmm. is right. Um, and a portion of those proceeds also go towards our therapy fund for black adults. And like we always say, Let's make the choice to heal ourselves first, because when we do, we change our lives and we lead the way for those around us to save themselves, too. And more important than all of that is the fact that you're not alone. Uh, join us next time. We're going to take this journey together, y'all. All right. Peace. Hi. Gio.